Dear students, let us start discussion on today's newspaper that is 2nd July 2016. The first article is related to the politics and the culture of Matalabi in India. What is meant by this Matalabi culture? The author wants to reflect this to an behavior which is related to manipulation where an individual tries to manipulate the mind of others to his own self-interest. So this is a deviated norm which is visible in the society today. It is visible in every walk of life, doctors, engineers, teachers, everywhere it is visible. So in this context, this practice of Matlabi in politics, it is reducing the rule of law and everything into certain the set uh, rules that are to be violated or deviated. So in this way, it is promoting a disdain or disinterest in rule of law and also it is diminishing the trust that has been built in our society. Now if you see the Bhutan movement and present day world, so where the happiness in giving and happiness in persuasion to shed something is being replaced by the accumulation of everything. So this is a typical example of Matalabi. And other aspect dimension of the Matalabi is self abdication of responsibility. The responsibility or fulfilling of responsibilities is more seen as a deviation rather than a norm. So in this context, India in the long run, it is going to lose something because of this manipulative culture which is becoming all pervasive in our walks of life. Now here we start, try to understand something called social capital. I try to link this Matlabi culture in India to social capital. The existence of trust and confidence among the people in a society and the outcomes of this trust in the society we call it as social capital. Now because of this Matalabi or else manipulative culture, the trust and confidence among the people is decreasing. Ultimately it is going to diminish the social capital which is the strength of the traditional societies in India. Now coming to Sri Lanka, let's take a recap. After the death of Elam leaders including Prabhakaran, the Rajapaksa government lost the elections and then national unity government has come into existence. I mean with them. Uh, Mahipala Sirisena as the president. Now, Mr. Sirisena, he has appointed a reconciliatory commission under the chairmanship of previous president, uh, uh, Ms. Chandrika Kumaratunga. And the UNHRC commission, UN Human Rights Commission, it has clearly stated that the human rights record is not very good in Sri Lanka. The Navi Pillai, I mean under her leadership, a report was given to UNHRC and UNHRC unanimously passed a resolution for an international judicial mechanism to inquire into the war crimes and, and to provide for the just uh, the justice to the people who are the victims of the war crimes. The three pillars of this resolution are the land which is acquired from the civilians by the military has to be returned to them and a resettlement policy has to be created for these people and finally a justice has to be given to them with regard to the war crimes. Now if you observe the resettlement and also giving back of the land, the process is very tardy and most of the land is still held in the military hands and demilitarization of the civilian areas is not being undertaken. And second, the constitutional process in Sri Lanka, which is aimed to create a federation and transfer of the powers to the autonomous uh, councils in the states or to the states, uh, it is not taking a space. So in this context, Sri Lanka shall not fall back into the world uh, ethnic divides and it has to look itself as a progressive nation that has to be built on trust and confidence among the people. That is what is the essence of this particular article. Coming to the smart cities, you know this in India the smart cities are selected on the basis of a competition and capabilities. So to implement the smart cities, the municipal area shall have its own system and planning abilities. The funds for the smart cities have to be collected by public private partnerships and the center provides for matching grant and user charges and other ways through municipal bonds. It means more and more market mechanisms are devised. If a particular city do not have the ability to take this money from the market mechanisms, it, there is a little chance it will be selected as smart cities. 
initially the the guidelines were strictly followed but now under the political pressures the total smart cities which are supposed to be at 100 they are been raised to 109 so if you take meerut or raibareli or in jammu and kashmir jammu or srinagar which has to be determined as a, as a smart city it was subjected to the political overheat and coming to 24 into 7 potential it is about a recent model bill which is prepared by the central government with regard to the 24 into 7 opening of the shops and other trade establishments. We can say it as shops and establishments, a regulation of employment and conditions of services bill 2016. According to this bill, a shop can be opened for 24 into 7 and it means obviously the demand and consumption of the goods and services will increase it is going to lead to increased uh, growth in the economy on the positive side it is also will raise the employment opportunities to the people but on the other side if 24 into 7 uh, services have to operate in the cities the cities has to provide for a huge supportive framework in the form of public transport if you take chicago new york ontario everywhere a strong public transport supportive system that operates around the clock is available and the second thing is the labor welfare also plays a critical role the government has to provide for simple grievance redressal mechanism uh, and also uh, the supportive framework in the form of pensions etc to these people who are the uh, 24 into 7 workers or else who are involved with the night shifts etc and the clear guidelines on the number of hours of duty everything has to be provided by the government now based on this the states are expected to come up with their own law on this 24 into 7 opening of the shops in the malls etc so in this context the may the thing is providing the welfare to the workers and also providing for supportive system in the cities which are not tuned to the night work shifts is very need of the hour now now coming to the youth the prime minister has recommended for 14 point charter for the youth these include them making them participate in Swachh Bharat plantation of the trees uh, building of the I mean toilets and to fight against the opentification like this um, the 14 point charter was created and every year you know that Jan 12 is being celebrated as National Youth Day so in this context um, the Prime Minister has clearly stated that all the departments have to encourage the participation of the youth in various governmental schemes and another thing is India is in a phase of demographic dividend it means that it has to generate the millions and millions of jobs so India also has to eye for the jobs in the overseas markets in the global markets so the prime minister envisioned for making india as a global capital for the human resources so in these circumstances skill development is critical so for the skill development the skill banks are being created the skill banks not only train the people for the job job but also provide them necessary cultural and other educational inputs to make them suitable to work in a particular society so especially as the uh, Europe and uh, Americas are aging they need lot of supportive services from young people so in this context the demand for the healthcare services and other educational services are bound to grow so our human resources shall be made skilled and tuned to for this development that is what is the objective of the skill bank says now coming to the Juno spacecraft of NASA now here let us understand so every uh, uh, planet it will have an atmosphere of its own which is magnetosphere where its influence will work on so now NASA spacecraft Juno it has crossed the interplanetary wind and entered into the magnetosphere of the Jupiter so whenever a uh, ship crosses the interplanetary wind and enters into the magnetosphere a kind of a jerk it faces this jerk we call it as bow shock now coming to double taxation avoidance agreements now you all know that India is a net loser with regard to DTAA with Mauritius Cyprus etc it is also becoming a tool for money laundering and round tripping a person from India he will send the money to these tax havens and he gets that invested in his company through a foreign investment route 
So because of that essentially the tax losses are increasing for India and it is becoming an official route to convert the black money into white money. Now in plugging this recently government has amended its DTAA with Mauritius uh, the second in line with the Cyprus. So in this case the capital gains tax have to be uh, taxed at the source of the business source country. It means if a company is doing the business in India and it is buying and selling the land in India or shares in India something and if it is gaining something out of it it has to pay the tax in India it cannot say that we have paid the we are going to pay the tax in Cyprus or we have paid the tax in there and we need not pay over here and here there is a clause called grandfathering clause what grandfathering clause it mean now in this case the April 1st 2017 is taken as a reference year anything or any action which has undertaken before 2017 it will not come under the new clauses or new measures only any actions that are happening after 2017 they come under the new clauses which are been uh, in the amended act so this is what is called grandfathering uh, clause it means already established business will not be disturbed under this now coming to the reserve bank now auditing CAG now in the CAG what he has said is the RBI and other agencies such as SEBI they have to be audited to what extent they are able to face the risks in the growing global uncertainties so in this context let us say RBI is not audited by the CAG but through a special mechanism or a board of auditors who are established under the RBI Act and SEBI is audited by uh, CAG but it do not perform the performance audit so it do not see into the merit of the expenditure it just checks the expenditure and um, for in these circumstances the CAG Mr. Sharma what he is suggesting is these agencies also shall be brought under audit and the second thing is uh, many of the chit fund scams are increasing recently and also multi-level marketing we are able to see so in the chit fund and multi-level marketing one thing is um, they try to defect themselves as CIS uh, I mean they try to make themselves outside the CIS sorry uh, not to depict themselves as CIS the CIS stands here for the collective investment schemes the collective investment schemes they come under the regulatory control of SEBI so they try to mask them as not to fall into this uh, collective investment schemes which is the reason for many of the small investors are getting affected because of uh, these schemes the share of the scam and everything are visible Amway is a multi-level marketing so these need to be curtailed so these are the things which the CAG is talking about and all the best thank you very much